Hello, everyone. We are back here yet again for another Mount Schmodown episode. And as you can see from the title of the video and our overlay, we are talking about the amazing Joseph Scrimshaw. Someone that Star Wars knowledge is like second nature to him. Hell, he has a Schmodown, not Schmodown, a Star Wars podcast, Four Center podcast. He's been doing for a very very long time and then as you all can see ryan is trying to mimic him and he's doing a pretty pretty good job at um at it ryan um <laughs> I can, it's almost like you all are the same person I it's know. so it's so interesting um joseph scrimshaw is a interesting uh competitor here in star wars if you look at his record alone you're like why are you guys covering him he's one in four yeah but people think about this um, his first match was a five-way. Second match was a three-way. Um, third match was a five-way. Um, then he finally got his first one-on-one -on -one match. And That's then it. his next one after that was another one-on-one. -on -one. So yeah. he's just and luck hasn't been on his side. 100%. And also a follow-up is like if you look at the Star Wars division that Joseph plays in, that's a very small division, and one, and of course, like we, we, we've talked about, it's very niche. It's very specific. Like every answer, every question, every category is all around Star Wars. So the fact that someone like Scrimshaw can be able to play in that match, and no, and despite his losses, every time he plays, he's always in high numbers. He's all he always shoots he's over always like right there. To, like. The five way we did with uh with uh what we talked about with Whitwer, he was at 27, Eight. 28, 28 points. Twenty eight points. And then of course at the live event, of course I mean at the three way at the live event in Los Angeles, he he was he was the second one to I mean Ken Nass, I got, he was the second one to be eliminated before Damon won. So that he was also in the high numbers, like in the twenties. And then at the live event in Chicago, he won that event. So Every time he plays, this guy always gives you impressive points, impressive numbers, impressive accuracy. This, I mean, the best way to describe Scrimshaw is at the live event where he says in his promo, it's not about who knows the most. It's about whose brain farts first. <laughs> it's literally, that literally is the Star Wars division. And that literally is what happened in his match this year against Demolanta. Like, yeah. they went mm -hmm. back and forth, back and forth the entire match. He had one little brain fart, cost him the match. Yeah. Like, um, that match for me is, it's really hard. I can't decide for match of the year if it's that one or uh, Bateman Merle in Atlanta. Sure. That was also really yeah. good. But this, this, you... An this Andrew Scrimshaw match was ridiculous. Yeah. I don't think we're ever going to see a match like this where they go back and, f like, blow for blow for blow. It ends in overtime. Like, that's just crazy. The only Star Wars match, actually, yeah, the only Star Wars match that did go to sudden death in overtime. I mean, I mean that's, all, that's what I know because every match before the Twitch tournament, it always ended in the final round. Either the championship match, a five. No, actually, no, I'm sorry. The first five way at the celebration that involved Napsok winning, that did go into sudden death. So I was yes. wrong. Yeah, that one did. I was, I'm completely wrong there. But yes, yeah, but Scrim, but despite the fact, Scrimshaw in his match against Demolanta proved to you why this man is so good. You don't have, I mean, yes, if you want to judge him on his record of one and four, I will not hold that against you. But really, just take a look at his record. This man, if you look at him, he's like the Bibiani of Star Wars. This man lives this, he lives this, he breathes it. And as Brandon talked about, he has a he has a Star Wars podcast, Force Center, that he hosted, that he co-hosts with uh, Ken Knapsack. Yeah. <laughs> they are like the two old Jedi in the Star Wars division. Like, they've been there very long. They know everything about Star Wars. Yes. Um, but I think sometimes yeah. they... It's the type of thing where I think there are a lot of competitors that have the knowledge for these questions. It's just some of them, it takes a while to pull the information and you have 15 seconds. Yeah, that's so the danger. When you, when you call Ken and Scrimshaw, then you say like Matthews in the league? I mean, division? 
I know Scrimshaw does. I mean, he calls up a Jedi Knight, but with Ken, he went from he went from Jedi Master to Sith Lord. Now yeah, I think he's yeah, back yeah. to a Jedi. Or he's like, yeah, I think he's more of a gray Jedi right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, I that little, if that little promo that he did before the Twist Turbo showed you anything, he oh is my a god, gray Jedi. <laughs> that I hope this year they add a best promo because that has got to be nominated. That yes. was. That was spectacular. But before this season, before we had this Twitch Star Wars tournament, we got maybe two Star Wars <laughs> matches a year. So at best, one on ones. At best, that's what you never really got to see a player like get a second chance at a match. Like it was like you had one shot. That's why they had these three ways and these five ways because that's how small the division was. So they just yeah. did everybody at once. This season, the new era, season seven, is when the Star Wars division started to expand. We had a lot more competitors than we normally do. Um, yes. And this Twitch tournament went off spectacular. Like, it was amazing. Like, it did yes. so well. I don't think Christian expected it to do this well. Like, that final mm -hmm. match, it, it got on the Twitch homepage. That's why we got yes. so many live <laughs> viewers. It was amazing. That, that's that was great and the fact i mean i i can't i mean part of me as a star wars fan wants to believe that because it was star wars that was able to get that attention from the twitch page and this is no discredit to the schmodan itself they built their audience they got that following but if it was not for matches like scrimshaw and demolantis in that first round to get that buzz going i mean no no doubt in my mind twitch would have been the, their their tournament would have been successful but it never would have got. It never would have climbed slowly, yeah. build to a scene that in that for, in that front page. We can and also I, thank Ace for that. For yep. a freaking no one, no one gave him a shot. Like everyone thought he would lose his playing match. He didn't. Everyone yeah. thought Ken would beat him because Ken has more knowledge. Supposedly, yes. nope. Then he took took down Laura Kelly. Laura Kelly stumbled on a year. Mm -hmm. Off by one number, yeah. and then it just it kept going. And then with and then with Demolanta, Demolanta fell at a very and, and this is nothing against what happened with Kelly and with Scrimshaw. His question was very tough, and it's one of the best examples why I think Scrimshaw with Scrimshaw. It's not about the knowledge, and I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to mostly going to be saying this over and over. It's yeah. not about how knowledgeable you are in this franchise. It always comes down to the luck of your questions. It's not just the Star Wars division. It's the Schmodown in general. You could have all the knowledge in the world. Like you said, Bibiani, Merle. Like, there are a bunch of competitors that if it was just straight knowledge, asking question after question mm -hmm. after question, like bar uh, trivia, yeah, then it, it would be okay. But that's what I like about the Schmodown is that there's luck involved. Sometimes it just doesn't go your way. No, let me then, no, no, excuse me. No, you go right ahead, Ben. You go ahead. Is this Star Wars tournament going to be become an annual thing from now on? Going I'm forward? almost certain I, I've heard Christian say, yeah, this will be. It, yeah. I mean, Christian can't ignore it. I mean, I would not blame him if he tries to shift it around to where it's not at the start of the year. But... I do agree with you, man. And it's a good point. I would the Star Wars being an annual tournament would be fantastic because it's a great it's a great way to recycle questions from previous from the five ways and three ways, and also the the it's it's a great way to build up the tournament and new players. Because look what did with Demolanta this season. Demolanta when he came, I mean we, we don't want to describe it from screenshot, but the fact but it but Demolanta is because what Demolanta did. Last in season six, because of that loss he had, it helped him study his ass off to where he pulled off that. He had two. Win. He had two losses in season six that he just barely. He lost that the five, uh, way. five way at in Chicago, just barely. He barely lost to Scrimshaw in that one, and then the one against uh, Laura Kelly in studio barely lost that one. So Dim Melanta is another competitor there competitor before the star wars tournament you're like why is everyone hyping him he's zero and two go watch the matches that's why 
you can't just look at these competitors' records to say why are you guys talking about them, why do you guys think they are so good. Yes. Watch the matches. Yes. It's just one little thing doesn't go their way. Yes. And that's what and that's what changes the outcome of the match. It's one of the reasons why when I suggested that we covered John's, we looked at his career, you looked at his matches, and we did say he came so close to be the first two belted player in Star Wars. I mean, in not Star Wars, but in the Schmodown. <laughs> yeah, in Star Wars and in their geekdom, because he was in that first Star Wars five way with Campia, Knapsack, Whitwar. He held his own against them. And well, then when we break down that match against Navarro, it went to his last question. If Jeremy had gotten that last question, he could have beaten Navarro. And maybe he would and of course he still he would have been Air Geekum champion. That's why it's such great for us to always pick a certain player and review their and not of course we'll look at their records, but when you look at their matches, those possi the possibilities, the what ifs, everything just starts spilling out like like hotcakes, honestly, because you see how magnetic and how uh, fun these people are, how fun everyone are, everyone is to play this game. That's why I love watching every match, either live or from replaying it later. It's it just hooks me right back in, and nothing says more than Scrimshaw. Scrimshaw is one of those players in Star Wars that keeps reinvigorating my love of the Star Wars franchise. Yeah, um, yeah, I I could hear people like Andrew uh, Scrimshaw, Napsock talk Star Wars all day. You yeah. you can just tell in their voice they have such a passion for Star Wars. They know all these little minute details, like how the how do you know that? Yeah. Like, that's Even Ace they're... 2. <laughs> Kelly, like, all of the competitors in the Star Wars division love Star Wars so much. They know every minute little detail. The, I... Like, the question writers have to be extremely, extremely creative in their questions to really stump them. Yeah, uh, I know. Uh, I've listened to a couple of Force Center podcast episodes. I've listened to Force Toast a bit and even checked out uh, when Dan Melanta and his wife talk about the Schmodown. I mean, even then when they're passion, you hear the conviction in their voice, especially Dan Melanta. When he is passionate about something, he does not yield. And with Scrimshaw, the fun and the com the humor and just the wit and the, the intelligence you hear coming off him when he breaks down Empire, when he wants to talk about something, from, when he wants to talk about a storyline from Legends that he sees could be adapted into a Star Wars film, or when he and Ken are just going back and forth on Imperial oh. officers. It's just insane. Yeah. So which is why it never surprised me when I see a question like, um, what ship did Nia Nub fly into the Battle of Exocor and Rise of Skywalker, and of course the answer is the Radiant Four from Star Wars Episode Four. That doesn't shock me. So No. The one question in this Star Wars tournament that I lost it on was I think it was Ace's five pointer against Laura Kelly. They asked the ticket number from oh The Last Jedi on Canto Bite. Doesn't even blink. I'm like, what the no no, what? Like I yeah, lost I'm, it. I'm like, okay, this, yeah. this man's for real. Like, and I'm don't. A staunch... Oh no, you go ahead, man. I don't. No, I'm like this. Me. This guy is for real. I love Star Wars. I watch a lot of Star Wars. I had no. I, I don't. I didn't go that deep. Like, yeah. Am, that, I and I wrote... he, am I crazy? Do you think is is going to be Neiman and is that I don't You're know. Not crazy. With me, crazy, that... I just think the long layoff, because I think with Ace, he was in such a rhythm in that Star Wars tournament that he just was clicking on all cylinders. So I don't I don't know what we're going to get at Spectacular. Um, all I know is it's going to be a Spectacular match. Yeah. Pun intended. Um, <laughs> I, anytime that I'm talking about the Schmodown, I will always use the word Spectacular. Uh, spectacular to describe anything just because it fits. Um, I don't know. The next season... Go ahead, Ben. I mean, I know it's spectacular. It's sounding better and better every day. Every time you hear more and more from it, 
in town for men and men. I just, you know. I just wish we could be there, but uh, yeah, that's... I, and that's also one thing about this: the matches. I mean, the fact that with the new digital format, especially what we've seen with Merle and Irwin with the team matches of of the Founding Fathers Corruption, the new speed round format that has happened. Oh, I mean, they did test that out with Dimolanta against Ace. I mean, the five rounds. I mean, the fact Ace Ace has become accumulated to that format. It, the only question is, will Damon be accumulating to that format? I know Damon is a uh, beast. He's a monster. Well, if you watched uh, his, the champs match, he held his own. If you're mm -hmm. a, if you're a um, patron of the Schmodown, you saw that Lord of the Rings match. Oh, yeah. Um, so good. You saw what he did in the Inner Geekdom tournament. Alex Damon does very well in the digital format as well. So, uh, mm -hmm. like his name suggests, he's a demon. He's just a straight demon. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that it's the demon, not the explainer. I mean, that's his. That maybe his pot. That maybe is. That maybe his YouTube show. But it's oh. just like one of those nicknames. Is like you can well, you can shoot better. <laughs> Chris is like oh, that one doesn't work. I, I, Let's go with the yeah. Alex the Demon Demon. It works so much. It works so much better. Um, but yeah, we could talk about this all day. But, um, but we're gonna break down here. Um, <clears throat> the match here between yeah. Dimalanta and Scrimshaw. This Where, is nothing against Scrimshaw, but his I love that no matter what match he plays, he always has that Jedi robe with him. Dude, he, that, he that looks like Obi-Wan right now. He looks oh, like Obi-Wan. He does. The only time I've never seen without that robe was at the five-way, when we saw the five-way, when they released the five-way match from the from, from Celebration. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But every now and then, he's got that. I, I, he does have a Stella Tour with him in this one, right? Because I, 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 I believe he does. Yes, I believe he drinks it in between one of the rounds. So yes, uh, I, I remember the live event when he went on when he went down on stage. I loved he used that force to pull a Stella out of uh, Robert Montano's hand. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> it was so awesome live being there to witness that. <laughs> God, I, I saying that makes me miss live shows even more. I gotta stop talking. Right, Let's just get right. Into this. <laughs> yeah. have, you guys, have you guys been to them? Like before? You ever been to one? I went I, to Free for All Three in Los Angeles. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah, oh, my, I, the Triple Threat, the Star Wars Triple Threat, and the uh, Shire Wolves versus Team Action. That was my first. Then I went to the Free for All Three in Los Angeles, and then again for a uh, Spectacular Four. Oh. So yeah, uh, but yeah, no. This is if you haven't watched this match, everyone, you definitely need to go back and rewatch this match. It yeah. is definitely for me. It's probably the second best match of the year for me. Yeah, uh, you still... guys can pause pause our video. You can watch that match, and then you can come on because we're not going to watch the entire thing. <laughs> no. Here we go. So we're just Revenge gonna kinda... of the Sith is the first category, gentlemen. After saving Palpatine and crashing back to Coruscant, how does Obi-Wan describe the landing? We need the quote. All right. All right. Do either one of you know the answer to this question? Oh, yeah. Another happy landing. <clears throat> uh, another happy landing. And then he... <laughs> what? The prequels so. at the time, when I watched these movies, I was, just like The Last Jedi, a staunch defender of the prequels, despite how crappy they were. And they I still weren't that them. crappy, though. Like, they're... I like them. I'm they're here. not. Revenge of the Sith is actually not that bad. It's the best of the three, without a doubt. But at the time, I was in high school when these movies were coming out, so I saw Revenge of the Three. I saw the Revenge of the Sith when it came on the first night. I defended that movie like crazy, even Patton, it, like every moment of it. But I lean back. There are some bad. There are some holes in it. Like the prequels are like Swiss cheese. There's holes in it, but together. If you just overlay the whole people, on the it's Star it's Wars. You're good. Yeah. If you're a Star Wars lover, you're gonna love uh, Star Wars. Yes, oh. there's some very like campy, like very terrible dialogue. Like there's some dialogue. Badly like, delivered lines. Yeah. Ugh. You're just like oh. George Lucas is like George. I know you understand this world. You love these characters. You tell a great story. But you can't direct for nothing, and your dialogue is so cheesy. Who's your script? I'll be honest. I prefer the pink ones mm -hmm. to the new movies. So I prefer one, two, and three. 
Okay. Well, then, seven, eight, nine. I think that's a... Don't hold that against you. I think a, a lot of people are that way. Uh, seven, eight, nine are very divided. Especially eight. Jeez, the last Jedi oh. is for... There... Like, I, yeah, I that, get... The Last Jedi, like, breaks up friendships. Like, it's... <laughs> I'm just like... I enjoy and the movie. I'm not... It, I'm not it's heartbreaking, like, too. It's heartbreaking with The Last yeah. Jedi. Because I like how the eight, The Last Jedi was trying to put take Star Wars in a new direction. I understand there were some badly timed, like... There were some good ideas poorly executed. But The Last Jedi, at least with the story... The idea, just like the prequels, I saw it was there. I love the idea of it. It's just like everything, once you translate it from page to screen... There was a lot of clashing of visions, and I think that's what the the major problem yeah. of the sequel trilogy was, is there's a lot of different viewpoints on uh, what the vision and what the purpose of it was. So. Too many cooks in the kitchen. In the kitchen. Uh, t- yeah, too many cooks in the kitchen, for sure. So it was hilarious, because with Brad Skywalker, after I rewatched, I loved how in the five when we were watching Jeremy Johns and Whitworth, I, I lo- when we were looking at their records, I loved how in the fifth in the final round when I believe um, I think it was Campia or Napsok got that question of the Skywalkers. There was that long pause, and then John just shouts out Ray. <laughs> like n- knowing what we know now, that's really just fun. an even more hilarious joke. <laughs> right, right. Like they didn't know then. They didn't know at that <laughs> time. So yeah, they both go. Perfect. Perfect. Like neither miss. Like the bonus question. Yeah. Who's Jedi apprentice before he left the Jedi Council? Again, this is something that's not clearly stated. It's like in a line, and if you're not paying attention, you won't get it. Yeah. And also, does it make sense to me? Like, how could Qui Gon be the answer if he's older than Dooku? He's not old. He's he's not older than Dooku. I mean, he looks older. That's without a doubt, Ben. But uh, I mean, because if you look at Christopher Lee's ap- appearance in that movie, he's got the gray beard, a little bit of the gray hair, and then if you look at Liam Neeson's, he still has like in his appearance, he still comes off the idea of an aged uh, warrior, but still with the vigor of a young man. I- I've mm-hmm. broken down these movies so many times. I've done watch longs <laughs> with friends, building up to Night um... Jedi and Rise Skywalker, and I'm about to do another watch long with a buddy of mine for the season two of The Mandalorian. So oh, no. I'm about Do to beat I... myself. <laughs> so excited for that! That's gonna be so great be- because the so Yoda trains Dooku, Dooku yes. trains Qui Gon, Qui Gon trains Obi Wan, Obi Wan right. trains Anakin. Oh. So George, he meant to have a very linear oh. path when he did that. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't hear it quick. Okay. But it is a good question you brought up, Ben, because some people could confuse that. No, I mean, I don't hear that question. Round number one. Not, uh, nope. I mean, it was a good nope, point. You whole, and we're going to go five, four, three, three two, two, one. Pens down, and we start with Joseph. With Qui-Gon Jinn. Yes, mm-hmm. Andrew. Qui-Gon Jinn. 11, 11. Wow, unbelievable. Look, I, just, you get, I love the contrast you see of Scrimshaw and with Demolanta. How with Scrimshaw, he's just in a simple room. And then with Demolanta, you see he's got the he's got the he's got the collectible items. That big Star Wars poster there. Like that dude he's shouting out to you, I'm deadly serious. <laughs> and the one thing that people had con- consciously and continuously bring up with these online matches is the hands. <laughs> this is a advantage that Andrew has being so far away. He just yeah. has to sit like normal. His hands are always in frame yeah. because he's so far away from the camera. Yeah. And from the way he has a position, too. And, of course, you see with Scrimshaw, you don't know what his room situation is like, so he's going to be very up close. So, so yeah. there's Yeah. Th- the thing about Star Wars is you don't have – now that there's eight movies – no, nine movies now. Yeah. Uh, the wheel slices are pretty much all taken up. There's like only one that's not from a movie. Yeah, so. I, I see. Heroes. Ten oh movies. no, wait. You forget. We forget the Clone Wars. That that. So that's ten movies. Eleven movies. Eleven movies. Oh no, no. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because of Bride Skywalker, you have the nine, and now then you have Solo. The oh, only right non <laughs> movie slice is Heroes and Villains now. Like in previous seasons. They had like vehicles, weapons, and droids. 
Like, yeah, they even split up heroes and villains in the live in, in the in certain five way and three way yeah. matches. Mm-hmm. They had heroes and then another one was villains because they had to find a way to get twelve slices. With eleven movies now, it's really easy. You just gotta and I'm almost certain this will be it going forward until we get another Star Wars movie. True. And also, it's it's it even le- it frees you more time for the third round to come up with more interesting you know, categories. seconds here to talk it out, starting now. AD, how you feeling? Feeling good. We've talked about this before, so let's yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. Um, Andrew is, like, he was so set. Like, he wants to play Damon so bad. Like, he wants to play Damon so bad. He... Mm-hmm. Like, from what I heard is he was studying like crazy since he lost to Kelly. He was so determined to win. And he 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 is extremely focused. That's why he's called the Hunter. Like, he's just... He's, he's eyes on the prize, and that's all he wants. You, you said it best. He is locked in. You can even see... He doesn't need... He's not even looking at the camera when they're giving him them questions because he is... He's he's pretty much put himself into the, the at a Jedi meditation, and he is looking for that answer. Yeah, it's like this, like even this first on the question Trade itself. Federation flagship. This is yeah. Again, this is something. Yes, you see the droid. Do they mm-hmm. actually reference its name though in the movie? This is something exactly. that you'd have to have to either um, get one of those making of books or look at the credits. So, yeah, or it's, yeah, you have subtitles to see if it was said. Yeah. TC14. Yeah. Yes, it is for two points. Yeah. Second question. It's, yeah, it's yeah, it's just Queen yeah, he Amis- aces this whole thing. Yeah, like, like it's... Again, the, uh, there are some matches here in Star Wars where I will not control, they get a will lot not more action particular that with the uh, questions and answers. So far, we've seen a lot of us to war. Yes, yeah. it is. Two more points. Yeah. All right. Question number yes. three. Like he nailed that what quote down. With, with, does with, with, Shmi give to Anakin when he leaves Tatooine? <laughs> yeah, that's also one you have to think hard on too. Be brave and don't look back. That is correct. For two more so, points, Andrew Dimolon. That's an interesting answer to that because it, there's there are two things that she says. So what if he would have said don't don't look back or be brave? Would that have still been the correct answer? Yeah, and because the entire line is be brave, don't look back. But that's to me that's two separate actions. That's two separate things. So if he gets one or the other, like would they have accepted that? Is that something that you challenge? And that's one of the dangerous things about quotes, because with quotes, when you get when you write a question in the form of quotes, and if you leave it blank, it's it, you it's when you try to finish the quote, there's always leave it up to interpretation. But when you framed it just like how it's with, with Shmi, what does Shmi tell Anakin in Pat in, in the Phantom Menace? Like what you just said, that is up to con- interpretations too, because be brave and don't look back is him covering all bases. But as you mentioned, if he just said be brave and they accepted that, would Koi have challenged it? Because I don't think Scrimshaw would have with his knowledge. I think there are certain competitors that don't do the uh, petty uh, challenges, and I think Scrimshaw would have been like, yeah. that's Like, there's just certain uh, competitors, uh, Chandru, that will <laughs> do anything. If there's any <laughs> a slight chance that it's not 100% correct... They will challenge it, and we. It's just certain. What is the name of? This is not an easy question. This is not. This is a Star Wars division Mm -hmm. question. Like this is something that. I I actually compared this to Adam Witt's five pointer against Sean Sullivan. That was the. That is one of the top moments of the year too. That yeah. pull on Adam's five pointer in that match. I can guarantee you, Star Wars um, this year Lundgren, have given Lundgren you so many moments of the years and, and matches of the year. Yeah, it right really has. Hand. Um, that's why I because in years past you would have who is the IG slash Star Wars competitor of the year. Mm-hmm. They they will split that because Star Wars had in the past had like one or two matches a year so it didn't really need its own award this year we sure. do and this and this year also solidifies it shuts i don't think 
I, I personally think it shuts down everyone's criticism of what, do we still need Star Wars now? No. This tournament, the match, the, the, the studio matches we had, it shuts down that Star Wars is not <clears> just <throat> a legit division, but it's one of the reasons why it is there. And, and I'm not even clarifying on that reason. <laughs> and if you've seen the MCU exhibition match, that is also a good match to watch. To Maybe Christian should consider an MCU division. I mean, it's so clear. There's someone what, like 23, 24 movies? Like, that's a lot. Of, like, they could do yeah, questions for a while. Yeah. Um, and, and if you saw in the exhibition, someone like Sean Gerber, who dominates it, and Jay Washington, who was never the best, IG at compared times, you saw how he was able to climb himself back in the in the race. Gerber, I, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil. MCU, I, I may be spoiling too much. No, no. It, so so far in the two MCU exhibition matches they've done the last two years, Gerber has been like Damon level. Like he just dominates MCU. Yeah. So I really hope that Christian considers adding another division here, maybe soon. Um. I, a lot of people want horror. A lot of people want a horror uh, division. Yeah. I think it's going to depend on how many people watch that horror free, free for, for all. Oh my god! Coming here soon. I, if that does well with numbers, it's another one Christian might uh, consider. Because honestly, I, I feel like with the staff now that he has with being at Room Hako. Yeah, Room yeah, Hako. More I never yeah. would have yeah. thought of that. I never would have pulled Dalte to fame from Adam's five pointer. That's the because with the because with the trade Alonso. Federation, you only Bring recognize two of the characters: fire. Newt Gunray and Lot Dodd. That's the it. The only way that I would have gotten either one of those questions is if I had time to look it up. That like, if I have to, I I can find a lot of answers online, but I can't do that when I'm. <laughs> In a throwdown match, yeah. I don't get a chance to look it up. As we get into our final, and that's question. one of those questions where you have to do in like student one, style. Look it up, write it down, and put a specific note next to it to remind you what they do. Like you gotta get, you're, it's like college level of studying. You have to not just look it up. You got to write down that, like write. You find a term, you write it down. You find whatever definition or special notes or footnotes that's on it to keep that, to put that in your head. So then you could easily recall it like that. Exactly. Exactly. Before this Star Wars um, tournament, I I felt like I, I know Star Wars pretty well. I feel like I do well. <laughs> Watching these matches, I'm like, God, I, I would have to go a lot more deeper to get some of these, yeah. like, this one right here. I... What? It's go ahead, just, Ben. They go it's so a... deep. Floor is yours, Ben. I I, I would in that round one of the tournament. I would be out so fat. These are so neat and hard. I think I'd be good until if I, until the second round. Like yeah, I don't I, think I'd get perfect, but <laughs> I I think I'd get probably about six or seven there, which is okay. But with a lot of these competitors, you no, you yeah, can't, you see like we saw. system did R two D two have to bypass in order to restore the shields on the Naboo cruiser as they blasted through the blockade. Oh my god, this should remember. It's just be auxiliary, right? The main power drive. <laughs> see, <laughs> see that? Like, you think when watch this match, you remember the question, but no, you rewatch it. Like, one thing nope. that I realized watching this match, and then watching his match last year against Laura Kelly, he takes about an extra three seconds. Like he doesn't immediately say, say it. He just like he thinks in his head, yes, making sure it's nothing else, and then he says it. He doesn't automatically rush to the answer. Yeah, perfect wow. round for Andrew. The most yeah. Like Tim Melanson, this match is a great example of how someone improves over a season. So, and then Scrimshaw goes to A New Hope, which I think that was said on a uh, podcast. Andrew probably went with prequel movie because that's the yeah. movies he grew up on. Scrimshaw yeah. grew up on the original, so he would definitely go on this one. On the exhaust port of the Death Star. I believe it was just the Red Leader. Red leader. Two points. Yeah, I think he knew that one too. He just was searching his head to make sure it was nothing else. Yeah. I think a lot of competitors do that now. Like they won't automatically say it right away unless it's the speed round. 
Like, there's no reason to. You have 15 seconds. Take your time. Make sure that it's it can't be anything Boy, else whatsoever. Because especially with this match so far, you and, can't and afford a slip-up. Yeah. One missed question, and... That's right, and now... Oh. And it's over. Go on to... pause for a second, because we're looking at Scrimshaw's record here. They put him down as one and two. So yeah. it's clear that his five-way match with Whitworth, it looks like it didn't count, or they don't count... Yeah, it did. Uh, yeah, so his first match was the five-way with Damon, Whitworth, Steele, and that... And then his three-way match against Damon and Knapsack. And there was the five way, and then his oh, Chicago. Shit. Maybe they yeah. did, maybe it was a mistype. Um, maybe it was a mistype there. Yeah, he should be one in three here because right. Yeah, yeah, he he should be one in three because this the stats right now say he's one in four. He hasn't okay. had a match since this. So yeah, I, got... simple mistype. Simple mistype. Yeah. Yeah. In a new hope, Luke says that Ben lives out beyond where the Dune Sea. Yeah. See, I think. That first one, I think he didn't know it right away. This one he knew automatically. Like, he took, what, like, not even a second on that one? It, it just shows, like, exactly with the question, how, like what you said, the writers are trying to make them not complicated, but more challenging to really make you use that time in Joseph, order to find the answer. What does compare flying at full throttle in the Death Star Trench to in A New Hope? Yeah, Beggar's Canyon back home. Beggar's Canyon. It is exactly like Beggar's Canyon back home. Wow. Now we move on to your penultimate Just... question in round number two. I even love how Mark he gives himself a, a Star Wars character name, knowing that character is not coming up in the questions. <laughs> reports to Darth Vader that they detected how many Rebel ships approaching. Thirty. Wow. Same number of terrorists that took over Nakatomi Plaza, and now. <laughs> I love I love his comment. Mark's commentary sometimes is uh, so great. Like, uh, we're into your last question, Joseph. And yeah, whenever he's on like a different pot, whenever he's a guest on a podcast or he does his own trivia, points. it's always great to just According hear to him. Tarkin. His comedy. <laughs> yeah, and again, this is something that's in a in a line of dialogue that if you don't really pay attention or you don't have the subtitles on, you're you're not really going to have direct control of the territories with the Senate dissolved. The regional governors. We're tied going in. Yeah. It kind of shows with the old trilogy and so it, it, well, with movies in general, sometimes there's just throwaway lines that will they'll just fly off from the back of your head. But when you do something like movie trivia and these lines start coming back and there are other answers, it's just those situations to make you really question and doubt yourself. And even looking at that too, I mean the, the score itself. That this was the first match to kick off the tournament. And it set the bar. Yeah, it was Yeah, this was the first like non play in. Like yeah. they had that uh play in match, but again, that's not if you think about it, it's not part of the tournament. Yeah, this was the one and, and we're like, Oh dear lord, is this how they're all gonna be? If so, yes, let's go. Like so exciting. Hey, Christian, oh, we might no. be physics would be if I can get familiar like a Star Wars uh, let's go in round three. Oh god, this oh, one is intense. Yeah, 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 yeah. But even then, this was good, like for showing Koi as a manager, why he picked Scrimshaw as in the draft. Why he was able to draft Scrimshaw. It shows he does have some and not as into it's not like he's showing his nose, but it just shows that he is very applicable he, he's aware he's applicable to the game he has the strategy he knew exactly what players he wanted i mean that's why i'm loving the fact with the quirky mercs though why he why he i mean the fact he got bibiani brendan uh it's too it's a shame mar didn't get a chance to play but i would have loved to have seen how mar would have been this year and perry. even with the real uh, perry yeah. the real rejects every player he has drafted so far that has played has shown incredible Capability have shown incredible like improvements in their playing style. They've shown incredible calm. And with Koi, just like Winston, he's brought the best game out of each uh, out of each player. Because if you looked at Greg Alba and Mike Kalinowski's match, until his match against Chance, Mike was never taken to his five pointer except against Alba. Didn't Zipper take him to his five, or did Zipper take no, him to his no, three? No, no, Zipper Zipper came up short, unfortunately. Okay. Mike answered, I think, a two-pointer or a three-pointer, but Zipper stars didn't take him to five. Of what? Kyber. 
Yeah, see, all right, let's go back and watch that. Like, you can yeah, see. Shirat Imwe says the strongest stars have hearts of what? Like, it looks like right there, he wants to say it. He takes an extra one, two. Yeah. Two seconds to make sure. Kyber. Yes, for two points. It's at the time where you're kind of like fighting those reflexes, reflexes, but at the same time, you want to verify your instinct. You want to make sure exactly what, what you're saying is correct so you don't come off looking like a fool or an idiot. Yeah, because there have been some times in my uh, play-alongs that I do that I say the answer so confident. It's wrong. I'm like, yeah. it. I look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> or, if, like, or if I'm listening to the live, or if I'm listening to a show Scrimshaw, episode, the match that premiere, uh, and then all of a sudden I'll be watching dishes and I'll go, marks. oh, this answer. And then I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> nope, that's not what the answer was. Hey, like, I'll say it before the live chat even says it. Star Wars it. <laughs> so, in yeah. Vader's Ooh. devotion to his sorcerer's ways. Even that character himself, that Admiral Mahdi. An ancient religion. <laughs> indeed sad. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not that. true. Actually, it, it's worth two points, and I think the Force is real, Christian. Yes, <laughs> yeah, right, so that character himself. That his character his has actually pointer, stumped a few people who playing whoever gets Star Wars Category the 11, The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi. According to Vice Admiral Holdo, after <laughs> much of the Resistance leadership was lost, how Numbers many members questions, of man. the Resistance <laughs> are left? Numbers, number, and number question. Yes, it is. Three points <laughs> to Andrew Dimolanta as He's we now just... get. That's like another throwaway line you don't pick up on. It was category 19. Yes, he did, Christian. Bernie Kosar's number corresponds to creatures. And... I love how Alice, er, every so often with a, a number, will bring in a sports reference that goes pretty much over every Schmodown competitor's head and Schmodown. <laughs> Uh, fan, there's only a handful that like, hey, I see what you got there. I picked up yeah. what you dropped. Um, I'm Alien one of them. races. I love when he drops in those sports and, references. Oh, and that, the category came up. Alien races. That's kind of one of the what best examples in yeah, round creature. Yeah, so the wheel has 12 slices, but round three has more, so they got to go a little bit more creative with their categories. Oh. And, and I think that's one of the things that we talked about that I like the fact that now Brown 2 is more really going to be restricted to movies. That way you have more creative ideas for categories. Like even in Joseph's five way at Chicago, his five corner was in the Jedi Council. So you see something like that, which well, can really trip, that could trip up a character. And C -3 PO cross the this could also be, this, this could also be in a new hope category. That is correct. Can you not go to um, include the Mandalorian in round two? So I know Christian has said yeah. that he's contemplating yeah. um, including Rebels, Clone Wars, and Man yeah. Mandalorian in Star Wars, just so that it gives them more things to pull from. Yeah, um, but with the Clone I'm Wars and Rebels, that. it's it's multiple. It's like multiple episodes. Yeah, I'm fine with that with Star Wars. Um, I I don't know how I feel about it with like maybe Inner Geekdom them doing like Marvel and DC TV shows. No, it's not really, it makes more sense somehow. I don't know why. It's just because it's all connected. Yeah, like, maybe like like we know it's connected. Marvel and DC TV, we're not a hundred percent. They say it is, but sometimes the things they do, it's like it's not. So it's hard to really. So that's why with Star Wars, when he said that, I'm like, you know what? That's fine with me. Um, especially, I, I, I think we're gonna get a Star Wars tournament every year. Yeah. I would yeah. really love to see it as a in studio tournament. I just, I, I don't know if he would do that along with the regular matches. I think for me, if they were going to include the TV shows. I would have them relegated down into the third round, honestly. Like the third round category. Yeah. Or at least as one slice in the se one slice in the second in the wheel round, and then maybe as a couple of categories in the third round. That way, you don't have to dive too much into the television shows. I mean, unless you want to. But at the same time, you can still you know sharpen yourself on movie knowledge, and then have some of the television knowledge right there to keep you know just to you know as a. As like a side dish, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing, 
with a lot of these Star Wars competitors, it's not like they have to go out of their way to study these Star Wars TV shows. They've watched them anyway. Mm -hmm. So any question that they get probably in round two, round three about the TV shows, they probably already know the answer unless it's like a very deep dive, like throwaway line type of question. Mm. Or a random character from a TV show that's only one episode. Crayet Dragon. (laughs) I mean, oh yeah, I mean... Everybody knows that. Right? <laughs> Look at Mark. He's like, I had no idea what that was. <laughs> 26. 26. These two guys are perfect for perfect. And Andrew DeMolanta has to hit his five pointer here. Uh, doesn't have to. I mean, excuse me. If he hits it, then he puts himself in the lead and forces Scrimshaw to hit it. If he misses, Scrimshaw can win the game with his five. All right. Andrew, category 18. Category 18. Droids. Droids. Which is funny because droids is how he lost against Ace. Yeah. Here you go. I think what he's gonna have hoop wield robot missile launcher is employed against the clone oh, God, army. That Excuse is... me. What? Hoop wield robot that missile is... launcher is employed against the clone army. PJ, I don't know if you're watching this, but that's straight flexing. Like that's just that... damn. Geonosis. Well, I've actually I've come across this on Star Wars Data Bank. Hail I have I for five yeah. points, Andrew. And Andrew, I've written this question. <laughs> and no, Andrew, no, no. Andrew didn't oh. even blink. He got it within like Jim two Milanta seconds. Hits it. Oh, like he yeah. didn't even blink. Big shot. So Mark, we yeah, that question itself. Here. I've written that for friends who want to do Star Wars Scrimshaw matches, and they it. have missed it. So I did that. <laughs> if he misses, Andrew Demolanta will advance to the next round. Mark. Category number 20. The, the categories don't go any higher, and neither do the stakes, Christian. For five points in the tie. Joseph, you selected episode two, Attack of the Clone. <laughs> and your question. Oh, that also shows randomness of the categories. Two, at the beginning of the film, a handful of Jedi are meeting in Chancellor Palpatine's office, discussing how more and more star systems are joining the Separatists. Name five of the Jedi that are in attendance. I know that three immediately off the top of my head. Yeah. Yoda, Mace, Kiati, Mundi. I believe one of them is either Stas oh, Ali or... Yoda? Um, Mace. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. Luminera on Dooley. That's what I was thinking Paris of. Mm-hmm. Offy and Plo Koon. Oh, no, it was Plo Kuna. Wait, no, I think uh, Kiatimundi's outside. Yeah, he, it was gonna happen. He, he said a handful. He was just asking. That's that's one of the tough parts of that question. You seen, like, you could, yeah, you pulled up three, two, but he was just saying naming five, meaning that there is yeah. more than, like, more than that number. Like, I, I. So thought... I'm pretty sure on the, on the, on the question doc, answers mm-hmm. probably include every single one. And yeah. it's up to Christian to determine. All right. Yes, that one, that one, that one, that one, that Because I, I feel like there's like six or seven there. Like, I really do. And the going to overtime. Because I know going Yoda and Mace are, two, are the two things death. down. This is and then there's more insane. standing behind him. But Piotti's right next to Yoda. As we knew it would happen, sudden death. We are here. It's been predicted. And we are now going to get the sudden death. Mark, God, not a sudden man. death. Oh, man. see, look. He's drinking a beer. So, uh. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I need to refuel. Need to refuel. Number one, except uh, stakes are. This entire match was like a boxing team. match, We're punch for punch. To the field. You're then gonna write like, down your best attempt. It's like we're in the twelfth. We're in the fight over the twelfth round. No, it's like if the twelfth round didn't end by decision, but they decided to add one extra round. Yeah, they're like one final round, and whoever dominates or whoever gets knocked out in that round. Get the question correct. We move on to so. It's like really determining how many punches they landed and their accuracy of the punches. The only <laughs> thing that could destroy him was. And the fact that this match is one on a challenge. Down, Christian, and, um, that oh just my gotta God. feel like we could be here for the And it is forward. the correct ruling. We're gonna find out in a second. I won't, yeah, I wouldn't fight I that too, because so we're watching the films. So I didn't even notice that. Yeah, five, they are correct. Four, three, two, one pens down. Andrew? Luke's hatred. And Joseph? Luke. Look at Andrew. That is correct. Andrew's like, n- no. Yeah. Like, Andrew, you could. For one point of peace. Like, that look right there. One point yeah. of peace. As we have Luke, or Luke's hatred was the answers that were, that were on here. Luke, you have a, you want to talk to Gucci? 
Yeah, I would like to challenge that. All right. You're gonna, you want to challenge? I, I wanna, totally. I was, I was putting I, a challenge I wanna, I wanna, right there. Challenge. Yeah, because from Return of the Jedi, the line Vader said, you have controlled your anger. No, you've controlled your fear. Now release your anger. Only your mm-hmm. hatred can destroy you. Your me. hatred can destroy me. Not you. Yeah. Your your hatred. Yeah. That's yeah. the big point is that it's... You want to challenge that it's loose yeah. hatred, it's not loose? loose. It's, yeah, it's that's loose the hatred. Hatred. That's, that's, that's the, the exact line. Is only your hatred can, tr- can destroy me. That is the one thing that Gucci, I feel like, is his major weakness as a manager. Not knowing it, yeah. His ability to challenge is just based on his competitor telling them. Like, there are some managers, I feel like, Koi with Inner Geekdom, Winston, Inner Geekdom, I feel like they'll. They could challenge it before the competitor does, but. I feel like a lot of these challenges come from the competitors because, yeah. and it's even just... with the, when Tom went against uh, Jader, uh, when he wanted to challenge, he was trying to contact Kate, say, "Hey, I want to challenge this. I want to challenge this." But you know, unfortunately, Kate missed that opportunity to look All at right, the challenge. So give me a second. So, we're going yeah. to put our our um. Uh, thank you, keep PJ with the writer, which is really and... contradictory too, because uh-huh. in the last season, Tom. Challenge. I believe it was in one of Ben's uh, tournament matches in the in the Sing Ultimate Showdown. He did he did bring up a challenge regarding one of Ben's opponents, and was able to get that right. looked at. I don't remember it fully, but you know, this is like a real contradictory of Gucci's style. So as the manager. answer, after conferring with the writer. Oh yeah, I remember. This is when Koi was having internet problems, <laughs> so he was like oh, yeah, gone for a majority of the both, match. Uh, the writer and Mark Ellis. And your winner, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, Andrew. And you can tell Scrimshaw's like, yeah, that's right. And like in the post match, he says, yeah, that's correct. It just wasn't as detailed. And Star Wars and Inner Geekdom, you have to be extremely, extremely specific. And that is a good thing, but at the same time, that's also been one of the things that's caused some uh, challenges, too, because when a player does get specific, and unfortunately the hosts were just looking for a basic answer, it really falls down to the questions themselves. It, I mean, the host, I mean, I can understand when you write down a question, you're looking for an answer, but then, of course, the problem is if a player either knows like more specific details of the question that the answer, that the answer they gave compared to, oh, no, we were just looking for the basic response. Then that leaves open. That opens the door to so many challenges, just like we saw with Demolanta, with that challenge. I mean, if Demolant, I mean, if this was not Demolanta answering this question, and Scrimshaw went up against someone like uh, Wit or Sullivan or Kelly, and he just said Luke, they would have accepted and moved on. Would we? Have uh, seen a challenge? I don't know. I feel like Kelly no, would have. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because Kelly and Shannon together went up challenge. Even Ace and Winston would have challenged that too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, wanna... I yeah, I don't know I... if Sean or Wit would have challenged that. I don't. I mean, this is not to say those guys are not as hardcore Star Wars fans, but you, you but it was just from this match alone. You saw Demolanta, as you had said, Brandon. He was zeroed in, one hundred percent focused. And with and in some of the matches and in even this tournament, you see with Sean, Wit, even with Dick, Molly and a few of the others, they were all a little relaxed. They weren't like ride or die in this whole thing, like De- like Demolanta was. It was either he had, had one goal, yeah. one goal, get to Damon, and he just missed it. I um, mean, he but... did get uh, he did get a Damon though. <laughs> yeah, he did get a Damon. He didn't get the Damon he wanted, but depending on how spectacular it goes, um, he could automatically get pretty close to facing Damon. I believe Christian said if. Damon loses. Uh, they they both will battle for a number one contender. I believe yes. is what it was. Yes, and that's that... what he said. Yeah, if Damon loses the belt, he and Demolanta next season will play for a number one contendership. But if, and I think even then, Demolanta is still guaranteed a number one contender. Yeah, shot. It just depends. And... If it's gonna be Ace or Damon. Yeah. So he's he's still right there. Amazing match. So Scrimshaw has had five matches. Mm-hmm. Scores of 28, 27, 31, 29, 31. He's one and four. Like, that's what the fact that he's averaging like 27 a game, 27 a match. 
and he's in one in four. That he shows has never shot. Like if you just said his lowest one was 28. 27. Oh, lowest was 27. Yeah. And that was in the uh, three-way match. And th- that's his lowest score in total. So that's if anybody, funny. and as Brandon just said, 27 points averaged a game, five games in Star Wars. And if you even look at the, even if you look at Dimolanta and Kelly's out of their record, Scrimshaw, statistically speaking, is still a high, considerably a higher ranked competitor. Hold on, let me actually do the actual average. I was just doing it based you on just, numbers. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I did, yeah, I'm sorry to put you on the spot there. It was just like... 29. Just He's averaging 29 points a match. That's ridiculous. He should be like 5-0 and or 4-1. and Like, that's yeah. that's ridiculous that he's 1-4, and averaging 29 points a match. That's how the Star Wars division is, though. Yeah. Like, you and have it's... to go almost perfect to win a match. And it just goes to show you, someone like Scrimshaw, why it is important to look at his career, not just for the statistics, but if you are dead serious, and if you ever, at, if you're at home thinking you want to play Star Wars, you think you can, you think you can have a go in Star Wars. Watch the Star Wars tournament. Watch Star Wars tournament. Watch <laughs> and then, the five way matches. You know, watch most of the Star Wars matches you can get your hands on, and look at the competitive and look at the quality of players. Like from the five way of Steel Saunders to an Alex Damon, or you look at Ken Napsock and uh, Jeremy and Jeremy Johns. You look at Whitwer, and then you compare it and in Scrimshaw, and now with Dimolanta, Ace, and Kelly, the three, the top three future stars I see here, and Sean Sullivan, he's gonna get there. He he's got he's got space. He he's got room to improve. I would not be surprised next year he's gonna be on the same level as everyone else. And Wit Adam Wit even showed in his matches he has the knowledge. And the strategy and the capability is just the is just his the luck of the, the wit Damon match should just be called the challenge match. Yeah, it was well, like three challenges and within like four questions in that match. <laughs> that first round took forever. The look on Christian's face is like, oh, just get this match over. Like you can it's just like, tell. Like I regret. It's like I instantly regret getting wit involved. <laughs> right, but no. Um, yeah, Star Wars division. Is gonna just continue to get better because I feel like every year they're gonna add another new competitor to the division that will take it to another level. This year it was Ace. Ace got added and he just took it to a whole nother level. Um, I I bet like there's like I'm like 99.9 percent sure we will have a Star Wars tournament next year. If it's on Twitch, if it's in studio, who knows? But it's what the fans want. The fans love this Star Wars tournament, so I'm. Yeah. I, I know I, Christian will do it. I would be shocked if it doesn't happen. I mean, I think it's a safe bet for sure. I just don't see why he. the The only reason I think he, I guess, may not is he wants to just get a bunch because this year we didn't have a lot of singles and team stuff. That's true. That he may sure. just want to focus a little bit more on doing singles and teams for season eight. But who knows? Um, the the size of the staff that he has there with Skybam, it's possible that instead of them having to film like eight matches on a Saturday, they could do like one match throughout the week, like at night, and then do like six or seven on the weekend. And you can like we could have what we had with the singles mm-hmm. tournament, one mm-hmm. match every day for weeks. Yeah. Um, and which. It, it, if and if he does, content. yeah, if you're a content hound, but uh, I'm uh, even with Star Wars, even if it, let's say next season he's gonna schedule more singles and teams matches, I can still see Star Wars being put somewhere like in the month of like somewhere between May and July, you know, just for, or even then, like, um, maybe do not like an ex, not like Star Wars exhibition match, but maybe kind of have a couple of let's just remind all the Star Wars players, look, it's coming, uh, maybe do like one or two three-way matches like at the start of the year just for anyone who still wants to get you know you know get that rust off him because i know unfortunately with damon alex i mean he has no choice but to wait (laughs) he hasn't had a star wars match this year um luckily can you imagine what it would have been like if he decided not to go to inner geekdom oh my Um, god he would not have had a match all year 
Um, he even asked Christian if if he could put his belt on the line for the Star Wars tournament. And Christian said no. I mean, I would not blame Damon for that because even with Damon, um, look, we are definitely going to be talking about Alex Damon, no doubt. But you can just see how much like Damon loved talking, playing Star Wars, and even with Joseph Scrimshaw, he loves Star Wars. And now with Demolanta and Ace, with that passion they have, this comp- this tournament just. Um, just uh, reinvigorated and ignited a passion for more Star Wars matches. That I swear to God, if Ace and Demol- if Ace and uh, Damon are going to kick off the spectacular, I have no doubt in my mind it's going to be one of the most highly anticipated matches. More anticipated than Chanju and Chance. More anticipated than whoever's going to win. Whoever the teams are singles. Because that because at the start of the year, it brought. It gave such the Shmodown such a high recognition on Twitch, as you said. It made the front page out of from the final match. Which is when I saw that happen, I was like, "Why are there? There's so many people watching." And then they let, it, "Oh, yeah, we somehow got on the front page of Twitch." I'm like, "What? Crazy!" And even then, the star, the the, the, the success of the Star Wars tournament itself really has opened. A huge avenue from not just another Star Wars tournament, but for more opportunities for Snowdown to give matches on a different platform outside of YouTube. I mean, I will not look if we are going to say get a horror division or at least a horror tournament, it wouldn't surprise me if that's going to be on Twitch. Or let's say if we do have an MCU tournament, Twitch is the best place to do it too. Because guess what? MCU is general, it's worldwide. If people stumble across this, I will not be surprised if the MCU tur- if Schmodown is on the front page two or three times. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, I'm just, I'm really uh, looking forward to what the Star Wars division is going to be, uh, what it's going to look like uh, moving forward. Yeah. Um, but- see what we get there in Season 8. I mean, we do have one more Star Wars match this year that will be at Spectacular. Um, we don't know when exactly at Spectacular will be. Will it be the first one? Will it be the second? Will it be the fourth? Like, we don't it's know under- when. We don't know when. And I think I heard Christian say there's still a chance that they might do it at a venue just without fans. I mean, um, I know some... I- it wouldn't. It, it would not surprise me if he does that. That way, he can still give that studio feel to the audience. And to be honest, I would not say no to that. I would I never would say want, no to that. I would love to watch that. I, I, I would love. I love these online matches. They're great. We're still getting Schmodown content. I just I prefer live and studio matches. And at the same time, with the studio matches, we're gone with the whole argument of the of the hands on screen with the digital one. As as much as I love these digital matches. The, the crutch of every showdown fan wanting the hands on screen, unfortunately. No, it, there's there's a handful of people that make such a big deal. Most people don't even notice. Because I don't know why people's thought process is, oh, I can't see your hands on screen, so you're probably looking up. Why would you even think that? Just, just because you've been in the fan leagues and people have done it there doesn't mean these these yeah. professionals do it that way. No, uh, I agree. I, it's not. It, I, I I don't want to knock the fan community and the fan leagues, but when you try to stress an argument or make a point on how oh I played in the fan league, so I've had this realization. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. You are just uh, you represent a minority. You represent a fan base compared to the professionals they bring in. People who are critics, pundits, uh, reviewers, people who actually have jobs in the entertainment industry, and they understand. One smudge can cost you everything. I understand the family community. It's not, I don't want to insult anybody there, but you need to understand the difference. The showdown started way before the family community even. You guys began. wouldn't have your families without the showdown. So just pump your brakes. All right. Yeah, we don't want to insult you guys, but you're not making yourself look very pretty. And I'm pretty sure people in the chat are going to be shoot, shouting at us too. But that's just. I don't care. Way. You can. You can come after me right here, or you can come after us down on our Twitter. I don't care. Come yeah. after me. I will. No, this is the fact that this who... gets brought up way too much. Just really frustrates me. I'm like, yeah. why? Why do you automatically go to the worst case scenario? 
some of these competitors aren't used to playing like this. No. They're used to just having their hands down on a desk. Like, and if you've seen the studio matches, the camera, the way the camera is shot, they have the camera at over a ten, like a, a twelve foot distance, and the only time it ever zooms in is when you know it has to get down to a certain shot, like of them winning or not. So yeah. um, it's always about difference, and I don't want to blame anybody. I want to give some leeway to you guys. I participate in fan league matches, so if you guys want to bring that comment to me, go on to fan league. Just type my name and just look into th movie trivia matches. You'll find me on there, and then you can judge me on how I play in fan league trivia compared to people in the showdown. I welcome it. More views to their channels and more views on you guys watching me. <laughs> and if not, yeah, shout out to me at my Twitter handle, or you can shout out to me on the Twitter on the Twitter of Mount Showdown. So, um, everyone, uh, I, I, you... I, 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 <laughs> yeah, so it's it, like it, it, I think the problem is it, it's it, it's a fallback, unfortunately, with sports because with sports we've seen athletes rise to prominence and then all of a sudden it's a um, it's revealed that they you know cheated through their scandals. I mean, it's shown that with baseball, with football, especially in the especially other sports like soccer. Like, cycling, how do you cheat rugby. in the schmodown? Like, I I don't understand. I'm like. What do you have someone off screen? Here's the question, but people have to remember these live streaming matches. The stream is about 15 seconds behind, so by the time they hear the question, the competitor has to answer. So, like, you'd have to go like be super creative on cheating. Yeah, and I don't think any of these competitors would risk that. No, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, if we just look with Scrimshaw, his hands were down most of the time, but because of his track record as someone who has played Star Wars matches, there is no doubt in your mind at all that this dude needed any assistance. He didn't challenge the, he didn't even fight back at the challenge because the moment it, the argument was brought up to him, like when the cameras were not focused, when the cameras you know were off, he realized, oh, that is correct. And even Scrimshaw, he, I mean, even Dimolanta. He phrased this challenge. He's the way he argued it. He quoted the line that Vader said. But you know what? I think this is just going to lead us down into a big hole. So, uh, any final thoughts on Scrimshaw, guys? Like, if you see Scrimshaw next year, if he, let's say, if Koi doesn't draft him, who do you actually see him with? That's a good question. I don't think Ken's going to be man, uh, be with the Droogs. It's going to be yeah. a new t a new team name. So, it depends mm -hmm. on who that manager is. I couldn't um, see him with Kaiser. I couldn't see him with Kaiser. Okay. I, I think Kaiser likes Wit, but the thing is, Wit, Wit is not going to be one of the three that Kaiser keeps. Um, I think a lot yeah. of these teams will look very different next year. Yeah, it, it will definitely not be the same lineup. If Koi, I think Ben's love... right. I, I I could see Kaiser drafting Scrimshaw. I would. Yeah. That would actually be a good team there. Um, I will I say if, if let's say if Molly is taken from Sam before she gets her, before he gets her, I can see scrim. I can see him picking up Scrimshaw. Yeah, I I, I think Sam can keep him Molly. I know, but I'm just uh, saying. Uh, no, I'm I just, know. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to come at you. I'm sorry to shoot back that hard. I'm so used to talking with some of my friends. It's like, no, we need to get our points across. I even debate so many times, so I apologize. Yeah, that's fun. Oh god. Yeah, but honestly, yeah. If let's just say for example, let's just say for instance, the only Star Wars player who stays with their faction is Laura Kelly. That opens so many other yeah. avenues. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah, I think she's keeping Chance, Mike, and uh, Laura. I think that's the easiest three for anyone. A lot of people mm -hmm. have, have been bringing up Colin just because of what he does in the singles tournament. Uh, Mike, first of all, won't play for anybody else. So <laughs> she's keeping Mike for sure. And That's Mike true. probably won't play with anyone but Chance. So there's two right there. Same like with Merle. The same like with Merle and Roca. They will not play with any other team except they will not team with anybody except with each other because of the the brotherhood they have formed. Yeah. And um, I think. Uh, go ahead, Ben. Go ahead. I see Alan. Uh, yeah, I see Alan standing with Roxy. I don't see him moving. Correct, yeah. I that, think she keeps yeah, him. Yeah, if David still has that belt, I think he is automatically still with Roxy. She, she is almost too loyal to some of her players, in my opinion. 
She's shown oh, incredible. She's shown incredible loyalty to Andrako and Snyder, though. That's what yeah. I doubt. Yeah, we'll see how they do there in that teams tournament. Uh, Snyder's killing in the singles tournament, though. I know. So. Oh my god! If he makes it to the <laughs> finals, that's gonna be insane. He's gonna yes. double belt him. There's a scenario where he could end up being double belt him. Yeah. yeah, we'll see how these next few weeks go, though. Um, yeah. Everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it as always. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we will see you guys next week.